Speckaloos. Uh, Speckaloos is basically a graham cracker, peanut butter type of uh, product. It's got the consistency of a peanut butter. In the Netherlands, this is their peanut butter. This yeah. is what they eat instead of peanut butter in and the And typical Netherlands. Jeff, he calls me up a week after I first make it. I, um, the first time I made it, and then Jeff tries it, and he calls me up and says, Steve, I make it so much better than you, and, wow. and, and I've renamed it. <laughs> well, but the reason right about I the make speculus. it better, the reason I make it better is because I'm into flavor, and Steve's into watching the pennies. So. <laughs> I do not watch pennies. I <laughs> anyway, watch, I, used I, watch a lot, I used a lot more. <laughs> I bought it on Amazon. I bought a couple of cases of it. And when I was doing my flavor, I kept adding more and more, and it kept getting better and better. Okay. So, uh, but I call it Speckaloos only because for the audience here, it makes you sit up and take notice. Uh, calling it cookie butter is great. Uh, it's a graham cracker-based product, so you could call it graham cracker ice cream, but I'm starting to realize that nobody knows what graham crackers are anymore. In fact, you go into the supermarket, and there's this whole aisle of cookies and then way down low, where nobody can see it, are the graham crackers. Well, what? We grew up on graham crackers. Okay, so I'm going to make sure again that the gate was open. I'm going to make sure the gate is closed. And I'm pouring in four quarts of mix this time. I'll save a little bit of it to help wash down the, the product. And let me turn this on. I'm going to do this as a super premium, so I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Get that started. Super premium is less air. Uh, less air, the more your cost goes up. Because if you have a high air content product, four ounces is falling off the cone. If you have haagen which is a very heavy ice cream, it's falling into the bottom third of the cone. They're both good ice creams, but if you ever have... Um, haagen -Dazs. you buy a pint of it and you take it home. And you have a taste, a little taste of it as soon as you uh, bring it home. And then you pull it out after dinner and you have a little bit then. And if you're like me at 11 o'clock at night, uh, you grab another t small taste of it. You pick at haagen -Dazs. You won't see haagen ice cream parlors. There were a couple. They were not successful because people just felt for $4, which is what they had to charge because it was so much more dense, four ounces was just in the bottom third of the cone. They said, hey, I got cheated. I only got that much for four bucks. That's the problem with uh, gelato, too. Um, so it was not, uh, it's not a big seller in an ice cream parlor, though it's a great ice cream. And we put them in business. That was Reuben Mattis and his mother uh, back in the early 70s. Their factory, or their store, was... Um, just about two miles from our factory in the Bronx, and they started with a 20-quart machine and then grew from there. And, and talk about great marketing. I don't know if how many of you, you know, Jeff said I don't like the 60s. That's not true at all. I grew up in the 60s. I just don't remember it. You know, they say, you know, if you remember the 60s, you weren't there. Um, but uh, back in the 60s and uh, back actually during the 70s when uh, haagen came out, we were all buying Scandinavian furniture. You know, everything was, uh, you know, just sticks of wood with cushions on it, and it was, it was uh, high-tech. Um, so anything Scandinavian was, was in. And so Reuben Mattis, talk about great marketing, Reuben Mattis comes up with the name haagen and he puts a map of Copenhagen uh, on the container, uh, uh, excuse me, Denmark, with a little star where Copenhagen is. And everybody thinks, oh, great, it's a Danish ice cream. No, it was made in the South Bronx. Uh, same as my machines, Murder a Week Neighborhood. And um, I called up my sister, who was living in Copenhagen at the time, and I said, what does haagen mean? And so she said, I'll get back to you. So she gets back to me a week later, and she says, it means absolutely nothing. It's two made-up words. So he's, he's got people buying Scandinavian furniture is what we were all doing. He's got it coming, supposedly imported from Europe and from Copenhagen, uh, where it was actually coming out of the Bronx and then later Lodi, New Jersey. And uh, he's got everybody con convinced that this is really something exotic. It was all marketing, except that Reuben Mattis was a genius at flavor. He would spend a year and a half perfecting his chocolate. And if you want to prove it out, he's long since gone. 
Uh, but you take any of the original flavors, the vanilla, the chocolate, uh, the coffee, and then go try haagen gelato. And you'll say, what on earth went wrong? Because the, uh, their gelato is now made by uh, Unilever, and Reuben wasn't around to formulate the flavors, and it's absolute garbage. But his, they were smart enough to keep his original flavors. Um, okay, so I've got the speckaloos in there, and I'm going to add... Now this is what, and Jeff's going to talk about this when we sit down in a few minutes and, and discuss business and how you, he's going to tell you all about rigidity and how you don't want rigidity in business. I told Jeff I was going to put chocolate chips into the speck loose and I ran it by him because he's the flavor master and he said, hey, great. But then I was in the store and I saw bits of brickle toffee and I thought, oh man, that sounds good. I think I'll throw that in. So I have no idea what it's going to be like, but I know I like toffee, and that's what, butterscotch, I think it's going to be terrific. So let me just dump that in, don't try this with any other machine, and uh, we'll get this, I might as well start the freezing, it's spitting at me a little bit because I've got a lot of stuff in here. You literally cannot do this with any other machine on earth. Uh, because their fr freezing cylinders are so thin you that you'll... Fish? No, that's, that's for me to eat. Huh? That's for me to eat. Okay. Their freezing cylinders are so thin that it'll uh, damage the cylinder. So they make the openings very tiny so that you can't put anything in. Well, how are you going to get good flavor if you don't have it right in the machine? Jeff, do you add graham crackers? Uh, no. Okay. I think I'll add some graham crackers after that gets going a little bit. You'll, you'll know that it has a, a graham cracker taste, so I'm gonna throw some graham crackers in. But I think I'll do it as it's coming out uh, so that I get pieces of graham cracker in the uh, ice cream. There Soggy was a pieces of graham cracker. No, not when it's fresh. Yeah, you are. Uh, was there a question out there I missed? No? Okay. Oh, she's awake. Hi. Good. Uh, that will be it until lunch as far as what yeah. we're making. Yeah. So right after lunch. No problem. Uh, I need a dry container. Dry what? A dry container. I'll use one of these. You want to break them up a little? Yeah, I'm going to. Here, use this one. It's easier. Oh, good. Okay. All I'm going to do, because I want pieces of cookie in uh, my uh, ice cream, is I'm just going to break these. They break pretty easy. And you can decide whether you like the graham crackers in it or not. That's what makes it ice cream different. You can say, well, Steve put the graham crackers in, I think I'll leave it out. Steve used toffee, butterscotch. Uh, I want to use, um, I won't need too much. Here. All right. Uh, maybe you want to use the uh, chocolate chips. Now, when I'm finished with this, uh, throwing these cookies in, I'm going to have cookie dust in the bottom. If this was Oreo cookie, I'd have uh, black cookie dust in the bottom of this container. The tendency is you've got the tub, the ice cream finished, and you throw the cookie dust on, on top of the ice cream because after all, it's cookie dust. Don't do it. Uh, because we New Yorkers know that's not cookie dust, that's dirt. And we don't want dirt in the ice cream. So sometimes it's all about perception and looks. Now I forgot to put the rest in, so let me get that down. Now the speckaloos is high in sugar and the toffee is high in sugar. So the freezing time is going to be longer. Let me check my ice cream. That's just about ready. 
me get this ice cream out. Would you pull that at this level? What is it? You want to take a look? Ice cream? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, turn off the refrigeration. Uh, I almost forgot. I want to throw in some cookies. <laughs> take out a little more. <laughs> Spread that around. Throw in some cookies. And I'm going to hey, take the speed up screen. to help get it out of the machine. So I can run this machine automatic or manually. And that's my speculoos, or what Jeff calls it. Cookie butter. Cookie butter. Uh, Connie's got them in the other office. And let me take the rest of this out. Okay. Let's eat some ice cream. So come on up and try the cookie butter and tell me what you think with the toffee and the cookies. This is how you experiment. So what do you think of that product? Right here. Thank you. So how'd you like that one? What do they say about a broken clock? It's right twice a day. That's it. So once in a while I make a good product. Girl.